Wow, good morning. Looks like we're getting a beautiful sunrise. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, so much for it being a bright, sunshiny day. Yeah. It's a dark and dismal day. Gray and overcast and absolutely dreary. But you know what? Still going to be a beautiful day because I'm good and I'm great. And ultimately, I am fucking amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. So what are we talking about today? Well, apparently, little Matt Powell, Kent Hovind's preferred bum boy, since Eric Hovind has decided not to put out, has himself left the Hovind estate in Pensacola, Florida, or is it Alabama? I'm not sure which. Some place where incest and young earth creationism are the rule. Yeah. In any case, Matt Powell has yet again defecated upon reality with yet another bullshit claim made. Yeah. So, end of shift. And Soctopus. I love this t-shirt. I really do. I love this t-shirt. But back to Matt Powell and his unhealthy, compulsive lying to try to badmouth one Mr. Charles Darwin. Yeah. Yeah. Eh. The problem is that uh, Powell is approaching evolution as a religion in which Darwin occupies the same place that Jesus occupies for his religious belief. And therein lies his first failure. Failure to recognize that, no, that's not how it works. The fact is, Darwin was one of several people, including Huxley and Wallace, who figured out evolution by sexual selection. A principle that all three of them figured out together, albeit separately. All based upon the prior research of one Patrick Matthew, another earlier botanist, who had also tried to figure out how evolution works. But of course, that's not all. Because if you remove Darwin completely from the equation, and remove Huxley, and remove Wallace, and remove Patrick Matthew, you still have the fact that evolution is an observed biological process that anybody can, in fact, figure out if they're willing to commit the time and the effort. If we eliminate Darwin completely from the theory of evolution, we still have evolution. So no, badmouthing Darwin just makes you look like an idiot. It makes you look like a petty, vindictive, immature idiot, which, incidentally, you are. So there's always that. But mostly, it just makes you look sad and pathetic. What you need to do is you need to come up with a better explanation for the evidence. If you can do that, you can publish it. And you'll win the Nobel Prize. Because that's what happens when people overturn well-established bodies of scientific knowledge. They get the Nobel Prize. So, there you have it, Matt. Figure it out, study it, do the research, and win your Nobel Prize. Or, continue preaching hatred and bullshit, and continue being recognized as the fraudulent scammer that you are.
Pick one. Good morning. It is yet another beautiful day, and I just wanted to add this, that, uh, yeah. Even if you could demonstrate that our complete understanding of evolution was somehow wrong, this still would not validate young earth creationism. All it would do is force us back to the drawing board to reappraise and reassess the mountains of research that has been done in the last 160 years on evolutionary biology. That's all it would accomplish. And that's because evolution is absolutely one of the best supported scientific theories in the world. And this has nothing to do with Charles Darwin at all. The man, as I've said before, might as well not even exist for all that he has contributed to our current modern understanding how evolution works. Hmm. Yeah. So that's the thing. A well supported scientific theory is just that well supported. Whereas, again, young earth creationism is just the claims of a handful of hucksters, con men, and frauds trying to make a quick buck. And if that's all you've got, which it is, you're not even going to be able to challenge our understanding of evolutionary biology. But you are welcome to try. Again, the Nobel Prize is waiting for you. All you have to do is overturn 160 years of research